Good morning. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. I made it to the playground unannounced. I'm here at 9.30 as, as requested. <laughs> <sighs> Give me a few minutes. The caffeine has not booted up yet. I'll wait. I'll wait for my friends while I sip on my caffeine. I see too. Thank you guys for joining me. Whew. It's been a wild couple of days, you guys. I see three. Annie, good morning. Wait a minute. <laughs> I can't see, so you're going to have to give me a second. My eyes are really not functioning today. Oh, that's better. I see you now. Mina, thank you for joining me. So how are you? I see four. Let me know who's here. Let's have a little happy time. I feel like the world is a heavy place to be for all of us little children. And so our little children want to come out and play. Carol Allen, good morning. Thank you for popping in. That reflection is going to make me crazy, so I'll go back and forth. <laughs> I can be highly distractible. Who's in on that? All of us little empathic, highly sensitive individuals on the planet, we can be distracted by life in so many ways. So I was watching something. I was listening to a song this morning. I wish I could, I, I wish I had written down the words, but it was talking about shining your light and being, being you, truly being you. So I think that's where the conversation is going to go today is uh, authenticity. Alyssa, Linda, thank you for popping in, is um, just being authentically what you came here to be. Um, man, I've been around a whole lot of humanity the last few days, and I realize that I sit here, usually, typically, my home is pretty empty. Jim pops in, it's just me and Abby and a cat, and things are pretty quiet, and I have time to really work on myself. It's like the first time. I've raised six kids, so it's like the first time. Steve had three. Man, we had... We had... <laughs> Quite a crowd when all of uh, all of his kids and my kids were all together. That was a whole baseball team. So I've had very little time to just be me, and I've had a, I've had this past couple of months with all of the shutdown. I think that many of us are feeling that same thing, where we've just had quiet time. <laughs> we haven't been around humanity too much. Well, this little town is a tourist town. It is packed full of people. They're wall to wall again. My house is packed full of people right now. Sharon Boyle, thank you for popping in. So I think that we're all going through kind of a transitional phase, and I'm almost a little bit like, I think when we went into the virus, we were like, wow, I really miss people. <laughs> I just want to go to the grocery store. I want to be able to smile at people. I just want normalcy back. And then we really, Sherry Leighton Gatewood, thank you for popping in. Um, and then we came to this place where we were kind of getting used to it, <laughs> like, wait a minute, this is kind of a gift. I've got quiet time. i got time all to me. I can just work on me. And it felt so good. It felt so good. I've talked often about my bathroom floor after Steve died where I had that time to just sit down and figure out who I was for a while. And really, I found me. I found the greater part of me. It's not just sitting down and saying, oh, I'm going to learn how to play the piano or I'm going to do this. Those are all beautiful. It's digging in really deeply and finding the truth of who you are, shining a light on that part of you. Because because the light is usually on the face, you know? We're, we're, we're listening to each other's voices. We're looking at each other's faces. We're, you know, it's all on the outside. And we took the time to shine the light on the inner parts, the parts of us that people typically don't take the time to get to know. And those of us, I'm so grateful to all of you for spending that time, for being here with me so that I get to know <clears throat> that inner part of you better. And I'm blessed. I realize how blessed I am to have these people. <clears throat> Sorry, I have not taken the time to do my fluids this morning. So it's not going to go well. I realize the difference between we have family in our lives that we have to we have to um, be a part of. I'm not even going to share this today. It's just us today. Um, and then we have this tribe. We have these people that pop up that go, wait, I resonate with you. My heart just lit up when I said that. I resonate with you <clears throat> at a deep spiritual level. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is horrible. <clears throat> Once and for all, clear this out. Um, we resonate on a deeper level. It's, it's a resonance of the soul. You know, we, 
we're, we were raised to be attracted to the outer appearance of people, what they're wearing, what they're, you know, there's, in school it was always about who's got the coolest shoes, things like that. I love that we took the time to get to know each other better. This past couple of months, I've met some of the greatest people, and really, really since Steve died, some of the people, some of the friends, I was thinking about that today, Linda, you know, some of you have been with me for years, and I'm like, wow, you know, these these people, these soul sisters, these soul brothers that come into our lives and they come at us at a deeper level and allow us to be in our own truth, to be able to shine at a deep level the truth of who we are. That was the line that was in the song. Free to be true to who you really are, to dig deeper, to go into the soul, to say this is who I am. And I love that there are people that take the time and the energy to look within, to see that diamond in the rough. So I'm grateful this morning. I think that's just, I wanted to say that I'm grateful to all of my friends who have been with me thick and thin and to my new friends who join me here every day in the playground. We get to go to the playground, we get to play, we get to be children and we get to heal together. And that's the most beautiful part of it. We're all growing, we're all, our children are learning what it's like to be accepted on the planet yesterday when Geraldine and I were doing uh, Silent Mystics and we had Erin Robertson on there and I, I was so resonating with her story of being um, the outsider all the time. She has this special gift of animal communication. She's always on the outside from the time she was born. Hi Jacqueline, hi Charles. Always on the outside looking in. What does it feel like right now as you're gathering into this beautiful space of all of us together? Imagine yourself going to the playground or going into the lunchroom. Lunchroom was very difficult when we were children. We, we, most of us weren't in the popular crowd. We were the little, little outsiders that always felt different. And so now we're in this space of, you know, this is like a special friendship. It's, it's, I'm not sitting in a group of two. Two is always great. I was, I was always thankful to look into that crowd and see one or two friendly faces. But we're all waking up now. To the truth of who we are, we are strong. <laughs> We're not a little bitty group anymore. We, across the nation, across all the way around the world, we are waking up to the truth of who we are. We're shining our lights. We're, we're letting that love energy shine through us. And we're resonating with one another. And we're suddenly finding that we're not alone. <laughs> I think that's important for us to talk about. Are you feeling, I feel it differently. I'm different than I used to be. I don't feel like I'm just walking through life, being the little weird one, <laughs> the little one that was oversensitive, that was always told, oh, stop being so sensitive, you cry so easy, why do you get so upset all the time? Isn't that nice to know that we are, <clears throat> we're this huge tribe, this huge tribal um, gathering right now, even though we can't be around this big fire, <laughs> you know, right in the same space with each other, we are gathering through social networks, through whatever, whatever resources we have available to us, we're gathering. And we are given the time <clears throat> to remember that this is what we were supposed to be doing, gathering because <clears throat> there is such strength in numbers and we are so needed. <laughs> Look around you, we're so needed. So it's, it's, it's exhausting. It's difficult. I look, I peek in sometimes every day. I try to try to see what's going on in the world and it hurts and I have to turn it off and say, I can't look at that right now. I'm hurting for these people without even knowing them, without even knowing what's going on. I already hurt. And then I go in and look and I'm like, oh yes, yes, this is what we're going through right now. And so the truth of it is, is we're all connected. We're finding our little tribal mates here. But every person on the planet is connected to us. And when this collective consciousness is in pain and suffering, we're suffering too, even if we don't know why. So I'm grateful to you. That's my point today, is I am grateful to you for showing up. Not only here to play at the playground, but just showing up. Just standing up in, in your own light, whatever way you choose to shine. I am grateful to you for doing that, because your light is making a difference. I've spoken of that. I remember... When I first started doing these go lives way back, it was probably just months after Steve died. And I remember getting out, sitting by the lake and watching the ripples on the water and thinking, you know what? We're all just little ripples. Each one of us were creating ripples. 
And each one of those ripples, if you watch them, they're, they're touching the next ripple, and then the next ripple, and then the next ripple. And the whole lake, when the wind would blow, the whole lake was touched by these beautiful ripples, each one reaching out and touching the next one. And the sun was shining down on it, and there was this diamond effect. It was like this, the most, I can't even describe. There's no words to describe that kind of beauty. And that's what's truly what's going on now, is each one of us is has that ripple effect. And we are literally, we are literally <clears throat> creating something, an energy on this planet. That if you look beneath the surface, if you don't just, just look at all of the scary, sad stuff, if you're looking more closely, I can see where we're, we're really making a change now. This is no, there's no longer this little wake up call of, oh yeah, you know, there's a few people here and there. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is all over the planet, all over, everywhere. Look around you, there's, there's growth, even in the violence, there's a waking up, there's a sense of, no, that old status quo is no longer good enough. It's no longer good enough. People are going to stand up now and they're going to say, no, we deserve to all be treated well. We deserve to all be loved. We all deserve to have our voices heard. And isn't that incredible? Such an incredible time to be alive. And I'm grateful to all of you that share this time with me because we're making it easier for each other to get through this. It isn't easy. Growth is never easy, is it? I want to see what you guys have to say. Hmm, I'm going to go way back. There's lots of comments. <laughs> Alyssa, don't get me started. I know, don't get me started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's speak up for what's right, for what's true here. Sherry, good morning. Let's see. Carol Allen, I was going to the garden today, just wasn't feeling it. Decided to stay here and be quiet. Thank you, Carol, for choosing to stay here and be quiet with us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hold that energy today for each one of you. If you're in that space of, man, it's, it's a wild, crazy world out there. And um, it's exhausting. And sometimes we need a break. And so I'm in a space. I've worked at that. I'm in this space of just, I'm going to bring a little peace into your world this morning, okay? I feel like we just really need a lot of that right now. Playtime is great. We'll do a little playtime, but really... We just need to be still with each other. Good morning, Charles. Jacqueline, good afternoon. <laughs> Different times of the day, huh? Annie Seven, you can talk to animals as well. I, I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> I love the idea that we are able to communicate with these animals. And they are, I, I had a friend, I still have a friend, um, who's helped me with my animals before by communicating with, with them. And she has spoken to me about times when she would actually communicate with like an octopus or an animal that was going off to be taken to slaughter. She literally was able to communicate with these animals and how, makes me want to cry, <laughs> and how these animals knew that they came here for that. We, we think of them as being, we're domineering, we dominate these animals and we choose to... Um, we can kill them if we want to, and we can eat them if we want to, and somehow we think they're not feeling, thinking beings, and yet they're so much more advanced. They've come here to give themselves. Um, they know they're going to die. They know they're going to die for, for humanity to feed us, and they're prepared for that. As cruel as it seems for us to do that, these animals know they came for this. Just like we did, we've all volunteered to come into this planet to do whatever it is we've come here and sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's not very a nice life that we have to go through or a very nice death that we have to go through and yet and yet we're here for this so Annie I'm, I'm intrigued I don't want to get too far into it but I'm really intrigued with the whole animal communication thing so sometime I'd like to talk to you you know I don't know how many of you watched that show yesterday silent mystics the <laughs> we had some issues with um with technicalities a little bit. It was hard to, it's hard to find us in those networks. We get kind of lost. So I apologize for anyone that struggled with that. We'll work harder to make sure that those links get up there. But the whole idea being that um, if you have abilities or you've had mystical moments, you've had things that you really feel like you want to share those with the world, <laughs> you don't want to keep your voice quiet anymore, even if you're just really shy and you just yeah, Geraldine and I are really good at communication. <laughs> We're pretty good at easing you in. So if you're 
if you've got a story and you want to share it, if you would please private message one of us, we'll get you on that list to get on the show and give you a platform. I am so impressed with Erin yesterday, the way that she was able to tell her story. And she just had so much interesting information. We almost didn't have to even interview her. She was just there and she was ready for it. And so I hope that you all will take a chance. Um, many of you, I've, I've already, I can already get things in my mind. Like many of you, you already have beautiful stories. So let us know if you're interested in that. Um, Carol, I'm grateful that I found you too. <laughs> I am so grateful for each one of you. Carol, you are a special soul. In so many ways, you and I have this connection this lost love that, that connects us together. So I'm so grateful for you. Linda, I'm so honored to meet you, and I'm so blessed that you're in this group. We are definitely supposed to cross paths. Thank you for showing up. That's what my son has told me. He said, thank you for showing up. <laughs> like, into his world is what he meant by that. Good morning, Scarlett. Carol, I hardly watch TV, too. I've got this huge... This huge monster TV in the living room. It's as big as a movie screen. It wasn't my idea. Jim brought it over. <laughs> he doesn't watch TV. I don't know why he bought such a big TV. I've never seen such a huge TV. It's like 70 inches. or something. It's insane. It takes up the whole wall in the living room, and I never watch TV. There's a couple. There's some nature shows that I enjoy. There's some fix-it-up shows that every now and then I'll take the time for. Who's got time for TV anymore? <laughs> There's so many beautiful things that we can do, so many ways that we can reach out to each other. You're right, Annie, growth is never easy. Growing pains hurt. Think of being a child to remember what it felt like to have that pain in your legs, to know that you're like, why do I hurt so much? Well, you're growing. <laughs> it hurts to grow. We're growing. Humanity is growing at this incredible rate of speed. It's never, it's never happened this fast before. We've never had this big... Uh, well, we've uh, we've had big uh, evolutional processes before, but this is so fast. We're just really on the fast track, and it is difficult. We're feeling it physically. We're feeling it emotionally. Our bodies are constantly purging. It's like this constant sense of grief, and you're like, why am I so sad? Why do I want to cry? Well, guess what? You just lost another piece of your personality, and part of that ego just said, you know what? Your higher self said, I don't need that anymore. I'm ready to let that go. And then that part of you just said, okay, I'm out of here. And you went, wait, I just lost something. I don't even know what I lost. And it's good that you did it because you created space for newness. And yet that part of you has to still deal with that loss. It's like, what did I just lose? Because we want to hold on. The ego wants to hold on to all that. It wants to hold on to our personality and all of those things that we were taught when we were children that we no longer need. Um, ego gets afraid of loss. We're all afraid of change. That That is a repeating theme in my life. Jim's son keeps telling me that he's afraid of change. My kids, they're going through stuff too. And there's big changes underfoot for some of them. And it's difficult and change is so such a, a tough thing for humanity to go through and everything this is all changing so quickly it's at a it's at a, a personal level for each one of us we're going through changes we all we just are going through changes humanity is going through the biggest change and so there's this constant sense of discomfort of humanity's not dealing well with this it's like oh wait i feel something changing I got to hold on to the old. I got to hold on. I got to keep holding on. And you can see it in the violence and the things that are happening in the news. That is the old ways, kicking and screaming all their way out. They're just like, nope, we're holding on to this. We're holding on to the hate. We're holding on to the violence. We're holding on to the old ways of doing things. We don't want to let go. Ego doesn't want to let go. And yet, it is anyway. Because more and more of us are waking up. So, in that process of... Um, of those of us who are willing to let go, go through it, just feel it, feel it, it hurts to grow, feel it, be in it, let yourself continue, don't stop, we talked about tug of war yesterday, sometimes you pull and you're moving along and then you get pulled back a little bit and then you pull back out of it and then you get pulled back in a little bit and yet you don't let go, you keep on, you keep on pulling into the light, don't let yourself fall completely back into that dark pit of, of shadows and 
you know, and so many are, are really waking up and you're so strong. <laughs> Even in your weakest moment, you're so strong. So I'm blessed by you. Oh, me. Anna, you can put your hands on trees. I can't even tell you. I do on trees or trees. Um, <clears throat> I feel the same way. I'm so connected to trees. I think I must have been a tree. <laughs> I'm so connected to them, and I love them so much. <laughs> and so I spend a lot of time in the woods. I get drawn to them. One of them will just be like, oh, come over here. And I, I'm like, I, it doesn't matter who I'm with anymore. If I'm out walking in the woods or anywhere, a park or any place where I see a tree, even on a city street and there's a tree, my hand has to go reach out and touch it. And sometimes I really have to hug it. <laughs> I have to put heart to heart to that tree. We're so sensitive. We're, we're becoming a whole brand new creature. And we're so sensitive to all of the energies, the animals, the trees, the rocks, the grass. My clover grows and I love it. It's feeding the birds or the bees. The bees are loving my clover. Jim keeps saying, I gotta mow that lawn, and I'm like, no, just let it grow for a little bit longer. <laughs> let the grow. Who cares? I don't care if my lawn is as pretty as the next guy. I want the bees to make my honey. <laughs> so leave the clover for a while. I, mean, I think we're just becoming more and more in tune to Mother Nature, to, well, really to us. When I say more in tune to Mother Nature, I'm saying we're becoming more in tune to the truth of who we are. Who are we? We're so sensitive. We're so, we are Mother Nature. We are a part of this earth. We're a part of everything, aren't we? So it's in the waking up process. That's the most beautiful part of it is we can sense it. We can feel it. We can hear it. We can see it. We can, we can, ah, I love feeling energy. I'm such an energy hound. And when I see meat, my son wants me to, I can talk to him. You're still talking. You're still talking to the meat. I'm... It hurts my soul. <laughs> it does. It hurts my soul. I, I um, to, to imagine that meat that's on the table that you can still, I, I know for me, this is Annie Seven, by the way, for me, I have a difficult time walking through stores that have animals on the walls I won't have animals in my house that are dead because I can't handle it because it's it's too sensitive to me and I've been like that for a long time I, I would be walking through a store and all of a sudden I'm like wait I feel something around me and I'd look up and there'd be the head of a deer or something on the wall and I'm like and that tears would just come to my eyes and I'm like oh my gosh it's you I still feel you isn't that wild notice that notice that in you these days, that's your game, your homework assignment. As you're walking through, we're all becoming so sensitive. As you're walking through stores, as you're walking through nature, what are you sensing? What are you feeling? When does your heart fill up? Why is your heart filling up? Can you stop right where you are and say, wait, I feel. I feel. I feel deeply something. Something's here. I feel energy. Why? Whose energy am I feeling? It could be, it could be spirit. <clears throat> it could be your angels. It could be a loved one who's passed. It could be an earthbound. It could be it could be an animal head hanging on the wall. You could still feel this, the spirit of that animal. And it's an interesting exercise. I don't want to make it a game because sometimes it's not funny at all. It's an exercise of, of actually realizing how completely connected you are. And I am I still do it. I still like to go, even though it's difficult. I still like to go through antique malls and things like that because I like to, oh, I love to go through crystal shops. I love to be drawn, <laughs> silently drawn to those things that make my heart light up. They are souls, Annie. They are, oh, these animals are souls. <laughs> they're just, our dogs, our cats, they don't have to let, they don't have to stay here as long because they're more advanced than we are. They've already learned it. They come here to just share love. That's it. You know, they're not coming here to do anything else but share love. We're the ones that are in that lower vibration. They already know. They're already love. They don't have to stay and learn all the lessons that we do because they already got it figured out. They're just coming in to be our angels and, and our guides teach us lessons. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'll volunteer for that. And they come in and they show us this beautiful love. And then and then they step back out again because they're, they're, they're just, they don't need to stay here forever. <laughs> they don't have to stay here for a long time.
Let's see. Sounds like I will be going to live in, in Yonger. Okay, Annie Seven. I'm going to put you on the list. I will, I'll get private message you. I'd love to talk to you about these mystical experiences, these animals. Animal communication is something that it's coming at me a lot lately. So I'm more than happy. I'll, we'll talk to Geraldine. i got to talk to her after the show. We'll put your name on the list. Let's see. Good morning, Isabel. Thank you for joining us. Charles, stop trying to reach a goal you already reached. <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to expound on that. We do. We we continually look to reach and go. Our souls are always growing. So even though we may feel like we're already there, we're not. <laughs> I will never stop growing. Steve, who passed four, it'll be four years ago in September has made it quite clear. I used to say, well, he went back to what he used to be. He says, no, <laughs> I did not go back to what I used to be. <clears throat> let me let, give him the, the voice. I did not go back to what I used to be because in every single, I hate to use the, the word moment because time does not exist on the other side, but, but in every lifetime that he's had, in every experience that he's had in this lifetime, this past lifetime that he was in, everything that he did, there was an opportunity for him to grow. And he and I together, I often will say, well, I'm so blessed that Steve came into my life and that he stayed in my life after he left physical form and that he still comes in and brings this beautiful energy and this wisdom. And he has made it quite clear to me that the time that he spent here with me helped him to advance helped his soul to go higher, to, to push further. He came here for an experience with me again so that the both of us could expand and go to a higher place. You know, we, we're constantly learning. The soul is always learning. Hi, Terry. The soul is always learning whether it's here in physical form or whether it's on the other side or another planet or wherever it's going. He's made it quite clear that that growth never stops. It never stops. And so we are always, each one of us, teaching each other. We are all one another's teachers. Our pets, the trees, the grass, each, each one of you, me, we're all here to teach each other how to go higher. And we may think, wow, that was a really tough lesson. <laughs> hey, that person didn't teach me anything. That was horrible. No, that person taught you a lot. And if you didn't learn from that person, somebody just like that person is going to come into your life again <laughs> because your soul wants to learn. Your soul has a lesson to learn, and it will continue to repeat that lesson until suddenly you go, the little light bulb turns on, and you're like, okay, I finally got it. And I'll tell you the biggest lesson that your soul is wanting you to learn. It, listen up. This is important. The biggest lesson our souls are trying to help us to figure out at an egoic level is love. That's it. Can you love every little part of you? All of those parts that you feel are less than desirable, those, those parts of your lives, those things about you that you think are, are parts that you want to purge and get rid of, or you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I don't like those stretch marks. I don't like those wrinkles. I, I wish I had a different color hair. I wish I was like this part, whatever, whatever. Your soul says, knock it off. <laughs> Stop doing that thing. Stop it. Stop being so hard on yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, I love you. Every, every little part of you. I love you. Even that wrinkle, even that little roll, <laughs> my little donut that I wear around the middle, all of it, all of it. I've had to really work on myself for the past couple of weeks. There's an extra five pounds that I would love to lose. And I, and I, I can get up in the morning and I can go, I can get on the scale. And I'm like, God, why can't I lose that? And then, and I can look at that little, you know, at my belly and, I'm, and then I go, wait, stop it. Stop it. You carried six babies into this world. Stop picking yourself apart. Stop it. You're a perfect being. You're perfect. And so that's my reminder today is that's the biggest lesson. Those lessons sometimes come in painful ways. I would not be able to love people the way I love people today if I hadn't gone through the losses that I've gone through. They are the opportunities. We did that a few days ago when I was talking about um, some of the people that I've been exposed to. And it was like, that person that is really getting your goat, that person is an opportunity to learn. <laughs> so 
And sometimes it's learning how to love me better. Sometimes it's learning how to love other people better. Often it's learning how to see deeper, look beyond the, the, the skin level and look down to the soul of that person and realize that buried under all those layers of lies and because literally we have been lied to for so long and we've taken those lies as the truth. So underneath all of those, those layers that that person has wrapped around themselves is a perfect soul. Every bit as perfect as mine and yours and everyone else's. And down in there, there's love. And so can you learn to love that too? Not only are you learning to love every little part of you, can you learn to love those people who are driving you crazy, who are hate-filled, who not just drive you crazy, but but hurt. You know, they hurt other people or that you're like, ah, you know, <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. I wish that they would just fall off the planet. You know, you can say all kinds, and then you, hold on, stop. We are going to continue to pull these people, but we're not going to get this, this old paradigm to end until we start seeing all of the people on the planet in that way of, can I love that person too? Can I love that one too? Just like the wrinkles on your body go bigger. Can I love that one too? Even though that person has hurt other people, even though they've done all of these atrocities, can I learn to love them too? It's true. <laughs> I know it's difficult. It's true. That's what we're trying to, that's what the soul is trying to teach. And the soul will, will continue to bring, we will have volunteers. With their volunteers too. These people that bring hate into the planet, they're volunteering too. They're a perfect soul on the other side. Every one of us is perfect and nothing but love on the other side. And we, and we can volunteer to come onto this planet and be filled with hate be the absolute opposite of the truth of who we are so that we can help humanity to wake up to realize that all we're truly here to to learn is how to how to love each other no matter what <laughs> and no matter what can you learn to love that one too that's my preaching for the morning <laughs> i gotta have a sip so what time is it Who's going to tell me it's o'clock? Well, it's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. <sighs> big breath. That's a big one for me this morning. I love sitting here talking to you guys because it's like, I, w I already knew the part about the learning to love parts of me. But for me to sit here and go, oh, I'm part of the collective consciousness that's creating hate. I'm part of that because I have pointed the finger, because I have passed judgment, because I have chosen who deserves to be here and who doesn't. I have chosen which side I want to take. I'm really in it this morning because my girls last night had a battle. It was rough in my house last night. And, and they both kind of, I think when they fight like that, they want me to take a side. And instead, I will just pull them aside and talk with one and then pull the other one aside and talk with the other and hug them and say, I love you. I know you're not seeing things the same right now. I know that you're going through a difficult time. I know you've said hateful things to each other. I, I just love you. I let me just wrap you up. I love you. I'm not going to choose sides anymore. I'm not passing judgment. There are things that we've all gone through. All of these experiences have built us up to the person that we are today. And many of us have experienced so many difficult, painful things as this egoic self. And we carry it around in these physical forms. And we can't figure out how to let it go. And that comes back up to haunt us. And my girls have been through a lot of loss. And sometimes those painful things, when you finally get to the middle ground, to the po point where you're like, okay, why are you fight? Oh, you're fighting because you're hurting. Because you've got unhealed wounds inside of you. Because you've experienced loss. And sometimes those come back out to play. And I love you. And you guys will figure out that you love each other again too. I feel like I'm just sitting here being the mom today. This has been my experience. So I think I, it, I think I know that we go through these experiences in life. These people will come into our lives to teach us. And my girls, even in the their when they have these moments of misunderstanding, miscommunication, difficult times with each other, I know that they're teaching me too. I can sit here with them and I can talk to them about it. And I know that last night in all of that till 1 a.m. trying to help them get through this. I know that I learned again. <laughs> I had an expansion last night and you guys are having to deal with it this morning. <laughs> all right.
no, your animals, Annie says, no, your animals in the past want to come here to, to talk and say hi. Mm. I wish that my little red poodle, that was my baby before I had babies, I felt him come back in dreams and stuff. I wish sometimes that I could just sit with him and look at those big brown eyes again and just know that he's still there. So I, I feel that, Annie. Those ones that we lose, ooh, it's so difficult losing our little loved animals, isn't it? But to know that they're still close, to know that they still come through and say, hi, I love you. That's sweet. Thank you for that, Annie. Carol Allen, did I ever have a pet rabbit? My daughter had a pet rabbit. I didn't have a pet rabbit. She had a pretty gray one. She gave it away a couple of years ago to a girl who had um, Asperger's. The girl made it a pet, and so she... She'd raised it up. It was very loving and sweet, and she was she couldn't she was too busy to really enjoy it anymore, so she gave it away to this girl. So that's the only rabbit I think that I've ever had. Let's see, Carol. I met a farmer that would bring a cow up to the house for a week or two before she took its life to talk with it and thank it. You'll make me cry. I was told that in a past life I was the medicine woman for a tribe, and it was my job to bless the animals, to thank the animals, to um, feel a connection to them, to let them know that we were grateful and thankful because they saved those animals in their death. They saved the tribe. So so I'm very connected. I feel that really strongly. But yes, I know that they give their lives for us. It's not just random, you know, cows out in the field. And no, they're they're here for us. They volunteer for this too. The animals who cross over that was yours want to come through now. You talked about it. Now that I talked about it, they want to come through and say hi to me. I'll spend some time with that today, Annie. Trees. I love trees. <laughs> Their souls who pass over, I ask forgiveness to eat it and, cl and clean it. Yeah. I think it's important for us to be more aware, isn't it? Do you feel like, here's a big question. I've been feeling lately like this whole thing with the meat shortages and and all the things that have been going on, are we coming to a place where we're maybe not going to be? This actually was a few years ago that people started saying that we're coming to a place where there won't be any more eat meat eaters. That that we're finally realizing they're, they're sentient beings. Sent, yeah, I think that's the word. And that they are thinking, feeling. Um, and that how can we eat them when we realize that, that they have these beautiful souls too? How can we kill them and eat them? So I think that our souls are... And this whole expansion and growth that we're going through, we're becoming more sensitive to that fact. I talked to birds always chirping with them. Very, very cool, Charles. Their souls over. Pass over, I ask forgiveness. Okay, we did that. Oh, dear Lord, I can't have that in my house. My brother hunts and dead animals in his home. Yeah, Annie, we can't. <laughs> no dead animals in the house. No. I don't. We respect. We don't go around stuffing our people and putting them on a wall. And yet we disrespect these animals. Yes, they're beautiful. They're beautiful when they're up and walking. And yet we don't need to disrespect them by stuffing their heads and hanging them on the wall. That's just something I feel. I know I don't always, people don't always agree with me on that, but it hurts my soul. Um, Annie, or Alyssa, I talk to animals. Oh, all this animal communication lately. I can tell when they understand me, and a lot of the time I can tell they're ignoring me. <laughs> yep. My cat does it all the time. <laughs> Julie, sorry I have to run. That's all right, Julie. So glad that you stopped in with us. Alyssa, hello, Terry. I think I said hi to you already. I've been, Alyssa says I've been vegan for three years now because I don't have to be a part of killing them to survive like my ancestors did. Not that I never falter and eat something not vegan, but it's rare now. Very good. Very good. Ah, oh, let's see. Pachetta, thank you for joining me. I think I, I don't get to see you very often. Annie, you're an animal healer. I think that we're all healers of all kinds of things, aren't we? Animals, people, trees, nature. Let's see. Terry, our biggest challenges take us to the highest expansion. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And it's growing pains and it doesn't feel good, does it? Hurts a lot. <laughs> Oftentimes it's no greater pain. I sat here with two girls last night who have not fully healed from losing their stepfather. And the oldest one just cried like a baby. Sometimes we just have to go through. They're still working it. They're still working it. They're still trying to get to that place where they can find 
I felt him so close to me. So for me, it's like, I know, even though I, I lost that physical self, and I definitely went through mourning, and I do it every so often still, he brought me a, a healing through that, that communication with them. They just, even though he's proven that he's close to them sometimes, I've, I've given them, they've gotten these messages, and like, how, how did you know that, Mom? I'm like, well, let me just tell you something. <laughs> the stepfather of yours, he likes to hang about sometimes. He loves them so much. And yet they're not open. They're not open enough to really sense him around them, so they haven't had that kind of healing. But we're getting there. It takes time. Four years is nothing. When you go through a loss like that, it's nothing. So I know these battles of theirs come out of pain, so I just love them through it. Uh, our, let me see, Annie. Don't lose sight of loving yourself. That is exactly true, Charles. We have to love ourselves first, don't we? When Steve died for the first time in my life, I stopped and said, wait, wait. I can't keep going through life like this. I, I can't keep hating myself and blaming myself and staying in this lower vibrational energy. If I want to get closer to him, i got to start looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. Those of you who don't feel connected to your loved ones, you, you can't really, they can't lower themselves into those lower vibrational energies. So work on loving yourself. It has a, a dual fold. <laughs> What's the word? dual purpose. You learn to love yourself. You learn to put yourself out there. You start to look in the mirror and you're like, ah, oh, you're not so bad. <laughs> you're kind of cute, actually. I kind of like you just like you are. You don't got to change. I just love you. Start talking nice to you. You're, that little child inside of you needs to hear your voice out loud. She or he needs to hear you say, good morning, beautiful. I love you. You didn't get that. Oftentimes we didn't get that as children. So we have to give that to our own selves and say, you are so beautiful. You are so loved. You're so good. You're so whatever you feel, whatever comes to you, <clears throat> because your body is always listening to you. Your, those little children inside of you are always listening to you. And so we don't want to forget them. We want to keep talking nice to them. It comes in that way. First, I started learning to love me. I put a note on the mirror and I said, I love you every day. And then I started to blossom a little bit. My light started to shine. I was like, wait, I see something different in you. And then I started to go deeper and healing deeper. And I got down into that little girl. And then I started loving her more and more. And it, and it absolutely brings transformation. So self-love is super important. It is not conceited. Not at all. It's all about loving yourself in a way that you're willing to let your light so shine. And we need that our angels are all around us going, yes, please do that. Please, would you please love you? We love you so much. <laughs> let us show you how much we love you. Okay, let me see where we are. We're going to have to do a quick meditation here in just a minute. We're really, I, had, I love this conversation this morning. I love it when you guys come in and really just tell me what's on your mind, what's on your souls. Hello, let me see. I can't see you. I'm not sure what your name is, but hello, sociologue. Um... Annie, I feel a male dog that you were close to come through. Yeah, it's probably my little boy. I had a little red poodle. Um, it wanted to come through. I do pass and oh, pass animals and live animals. Very good. Where can I get you on the show, Annie? I feel you're like a crossover angel. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Part of me. Uh, Melissa, I think I may have known you then as well when you were a medicine woman. I have memories of Native American life and we tend to connect with the same souls. Yes, we do. We run in those same soul circles. And so it's funny that I always call people my tribe because even my kids, I'll, I'll have a campfire. I'm like, this is my tribe, my tribal circle. I have that very strong Native American um, connection. Like it feels very solid. And when I walk through these woods, I feel like this is Native American land and it's sacred land. So... I got a little tiny bit in my bloodline, but it's bigger than that. It's past life energy. Isabel, I learn a lot with my girls too. Often they fight over nonsense, competition, jealousy, and that is painful to me. But I am learning to help them and not let it hurt me. I am growing and let's see. Oh, I am growing and I am so glad finding you and Terry groups to, to feed my soul with positive thoughts and love towards myself because I used to think me of me as at last of all yeah you really put yourself last most of us do especially parents and everything with family and work i am tired of that and in the process of loving myself i'm so glad that you're doing that isabel so important if you get nothing else out of all of these lessons that we teach it's you gotta love you 
You are so much more than you have been taught about yourself. You are so much more. The absolute spark of God inside of you, the divine, this beautiful, like incredible, like you can't even imagine. <laughs> if, you, if you, if people are always like, if I could even look, if I even looked at God, I'd fall down on my face, I'd go blind. And I'm like, if you even looked at you, you would fall down on your face and go blind. If you could see the absolute incredible part, the deepest part of you, you'd be like, oh my gosh, you'd stop doubting yourself. Let's see, I'm off and running today. Isabel also can't eat meat. Used to, as a child, it bothers me just looking at it. I get sick at beef. I'm working on, I think now, every pretty much, I used to do a lot of fish and white meat, but I'm getting to the point where I just don't want any of it anymore. I can't, I, something about it. I don't feel like I'm more important than the, than the soul that I'm eating, I guess. Then, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. But we don't need to go deeply into that. We're all in a different place with that. Uh, still eat chicken and fish. Not done with that yet. That's me too. I have a hard time giving up the white meat and the fish. Sometimes I feel like my body absolutely has to have that. I'll, I'll try to go without for a while and then it's like I gotta have a piece of salmon or something. So I listen to my body. It's okay. And, I, and I'm thankful to that fish for giving itself to me. Michelle Shumbi, thank you for jumping in. Sharon Boyle, I've been quiet. My neck and shoulders are aching. Slept on them funny so I was laying down but it has not helped too much. To go into a salt bath. We're going to send you some healing energy, Sharon. I know what it's like when, we, when we've got kids, we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. So I hope that salt bath makes you feel better. Three kids in the house and only one bathroom. I have been there, sister. I got two bathrooms now and I've got a house full of it. I have to struggle to get that bathroom. <laughs> Let's see, Linda, I feel like I was Native American as well. Excellent, part of the tribal family. I have memories of very vivid dream. I look at the pinto pony, ponies and see if they're mine. I love horses. Pintos especially. Marika, Marika, Marika said it. Thank you for joining me. I think I say your name differently every time. So sometime I want you to tell me your name so I can hear it and then I'll remember. Charles been camping. I was known as Chopstick Charlie around the fire. <laughs> Excellent. We're going to go into a meditation time, okay? It won't be, it'll be kind of short and sweet. I don't want to run too far over. It's 1017. 1017 are my numbers. I love that I looked at that right at that. And it's actually my date of birth, but I've always seen 1017. It's, it's just my number. I see it everywhere. So <sighs> then I saw 1018 immediately after when it just clicked right over. And that was my grandmother's birthday. So hi, Grandma. Who would you like to bring in the circle today? Let's call in Archangel Michael for protection. Let's have a gathering today. We all need some peace. We need to feel the strength and the support that we have all around us, I would like you to experience that, that you're never alone. You're not alone on this planet. There is so much energy around you. You, you came here with this beautiful team. <laughs> and it's all about remembering that you're not alone. Because when we were little, we, we knew when we were little that we weren't alone. And somewhere along the way, we just forgot. We just, like, we didn't feel that energy. We just kind of laid it aside. People told us they weren't really there. Stop playing with those imaginary friends. Stop stop talking to those of the past. Stop looking up and seeing the angels. Some of they just said, you know, it's not real. Stop believing in fairies. And now we're coming back to an age of magic. It's mystical. It's a beautiful time to be alive. And, and it's coming back. Can you feel it? We're coming back out to play. All of these little magical beings that we are. I love being alive right now. I love seeing it unfold. So let's watch it unfold in a quick meditation. Get yourselves comfortable, put your feet on the ground, and let's just be joyful together for a little bit. Let's just let our children come out to play. Imagine your imaginary friend, whoever you'd like it to be. It can be someone that you, um, that you grew up with, my grandmother. I felt her energy a little bit. I can smell her perfume, so I know she's close. So I'm allowing my grandmother to join us today. And when she does, my whole demeanor is so relaxed. I see her in my face. When I smile, I see my grandmother. When she, right after she died, there was a song that came out by Martina McBride called In My Daughter's Eyes. And I remember the morning I was writing something for her memorial service and I smelled toast. Her house always smelled like toast in the morning because she was always making breakfast and there was nobody cooking. I didn't know that I was a medium at that point and I was like, Hmm, I smell grandma, I smell her house. And so I sat there and in that space, I remember just being there, feeling like she was so close to me. 
and that song came on in my daughter's eyes. It, was, it had just come out, and I listened to it. And the last verse of it was, When I'm gone, I hope you'll see. I hope you'll see me in my daughter's eyes. And I bawled like a baby. <laughs> I didn't, I don't cry. I hadn't cried that hard since her diagnosis. And I cried like a baby because I was like, wow. When I'm gone, I hope you'll see. I hope you'll see me in my daughter's eyes. Not her daughter, but I see me. I'm, I see her in me more and more every day. And I'm so blessed. And I'm so thankful that she she still comes around me like she is now. So can you who comforts you? Who can you call into the circle? Let's call in the comforters today. And we we have lots of protection. These the only ones that are allowed in this healing circle are those that are here for our highest of good. We're not allowing anyone else in. It's perfectly safe. It's okay. Bring them in. Archangel Michael is right he's right on the spot. He's like, I gotcha. I gotcha. You're safe. Don't be afraid. Bring them in. Allow your little children to, if it's a grandparent, someone that you like to snuggle with. I've always been a snuggler. I'm going to climb right up beside my grandmother. She's got one of my favorite books. I love it when she reads to me. I'm going to allow my little child to be comforted by her for just a few minutes. And breathe deeply as you're sitting in that comfort. Your little ones are so happy to come out to play. They say, yes, bring us out. Let's, let's be easy with each other. Let's be comfortable. If you don't have a grandma, anyone like that, that you can call in, you can come sit with me. My grandmother loves kids. She'll read you a story. You can see her thumbs as she held the book. She used to read all the time. So breathe that loving energy into your heart space right now. Let's find some comfort. Hmm, so nice. So nice. And as we're sitting here in this comfortable place, let's allow source energy, God, Jesus, whoever you like to call in, your creator, the creator energy, the creator energy that's in you, your Holy Spirit, higher self, can join us. It's okay. We've got God inside of you, too. You can pull them in. Oh, there's a big old energy shift. Thank you for joining me. We are in a beautiful globe. It's clear. We can see the blue skies and the clouds. And we're snuggled up easy with those that we love. We can... Let's do that, too. All of you who are animal communicators, let's call in. I feel my little red poodle in my lap right now. Let's call them in. If you want to hold on to those, those little animals that you've lost, let's bring them into the circle, too. That's beautiful. Mm, so much comfort. Hmm. And as you're sitting here in this comfort, let's allow, if you're so willing, if you, would, if you are feeling a need for a good grounding of your energy, a clearing of those chakra centers, some healing into your body, then you can just sit here and be in that healing energy and just breathe it in as I tell you to. We're going to allow that energy to flow. Archangel Raphael is just swooping in and saying, yeah, I got this. I got this. And source energy is... It's just pouring the most powerful energy down on you right now. It's like this beautiful waterfall of golden energy coming in through your crown. I see them coming around, angels coming around and touching you on the top of the head. Can you feel that comfort? Okay, be still, be still. For just a little while, let's just be still. This beautiful energy in the crown. I love that that feeling. Often we just blow right on through the crown. We're staying there right at the top of your head. It's like you're being given a crown right now, truly. This crown of royalty to remind you that you can accept your birthright, that you are of royal blood, that you are a child of the king, a child of the queen, that you come here to stand strong, you don't need to sit in weakness. No more weakness. You can stand strong in the love that you are. 
you can bring a, a new strength, this new energy onto the earth of strength and love. It's not a strength in hate. It's not a strength in overpowering anyone. It's a strength in I just love you. I just love you, every little part of you. We can love this away. It's the strongest power on earth. So let's just, as we're sitting here, allowing this beautiful energy, and we're comforted by our loved ones, let's allow that energy to flow to wherever it's needed. <clears throat> the energy of the king and the queen, these beautiful, beautiful souls, every one of them on the planet is a beautiful soul. And a piece of you and me are so connected. So that energy is going down through. I feel it in the third eye. It's stretching out. It's not just staying. It's like it's reaching. It's like I see tendrils. And they're just going to all your cells, to all your muscles, to your to this brain, <laughs> to your egoic self. It's like, let me do some healing here. So allow that. Just sit in that. If you want it, you just, to, to the greatest extent, you only have to accept as much healing as you would like to accept. For me, I'm always like, whatever healing, whatever growth you want to bring, just bring it. I'm all in. <laughs> I am all in. So I'm allowing it to just flow to the greatest extent possible. Breathe into your heart space. Big lift right there. Energy is moving down into the throat. If you feel like you need to clear your throat, to stretch it, yawn, whatever you're feeling right now, allow that energy to flow through your throat. Open up your vocal cords. Bring in the voice of the spirit. Allow your, your comforting voice to fill in. The voice of the angels. Beautiful. And down into the heart. Breathe deeply. <clears throat> Expand that heart space. Fill it right up with all this prana energy. It's just going to flow. The heart is just the, when you fill it there, it just goes all the way through your body. So fill it right up. Fill those lungs up like they're a great big balloon. Just make them as big as you can in the ceiling space right now. Pull it all the way up from your toes if you need to. Pull it in. And hold it for a little bit. Just hold it in your lungs and your heart. <clears throat> and we're going to hold that energy there. I'm holding it for you if you can't do it. If you're feeling tired and weak, I'm holding your energy for you. We are so connected. We can do this for one another. Big shift. Awesome. Awesome. Blow it back out. Release your hands. Let them, let them just dangle at your sides. Let the energy that no longer serves you, anything that you're carrying, that whether it be soul contracts, whether it be old karma, ancestral energy, anything that does not serve you, if you're ready to let it go, just shake out your hands. Let it go. The angels are swooping in. They're taking it away. It's all going to get recycled. They love to recycle. <laughs> It'll get recycled and turned back into a, a love energy. Those spaces will not remain empty. They'll be filled, refilled with something so beautiful, you'll be like, in a, in a week, you'll be like, wait, who am I? I've changed again. I've changed. I'll let yourself. It's okay. Change is okay. Change is good. Change can bring about miracles. Down into the solar plexus. Beautiful. Excellent. Breathe big into your belly. Lots of clearing. Whew. Lots of clearing going on. It's powerful. You can let it go. I hear that song often. Let it go. <laughs> Don't hold on so tight. It's okay, little ones. It's okay. You can let go. We got gotcha. you. Just rest there in that grandma, grandpa, whoever whoever you're resting with or, or petting on those animals that, that you thought were lost that are now laying in your lap. Just love on them. Accept that love. 
They're here to comfort you right through this. Okay, down into belly. Breathe big into your belly. Mm. So much emotion gets wrapped up in that space, so it's hard for me. All that mama energy, I always think of a second as being the womb. Not everybody does that, but I do. And there's so much creative energy that comes from that area when you open up to it. You know, light shines through. If there's any cords or attachments, I am seeing some cords or attachments to the belly area. We would ask Archangel Michael to come in and sever and release anything that is lower vibrational energy, anything that's making you feel sick, that's causing nausea, that's holding you, that is not your own. Any cords or attachments, if they're earthbound, we ask that they would be crossed over into the light. If you're holding on to someone that you love because you think they've crossed over and you think that's the only way to hold on, I can promise you that you can let go of that cord. Let it go. Allow Archangel Michael to come in and sever it. You will not lose the love. You're only losing the pain when you do that. Allow that cord to be severed so that that, that loved one gets to fully go into healing and you get to begin to heal and all of those discomforts that you're having with the nausea and the fatigue they're going to lighten up so if you're willing to let go of that and know that then those loved ones can come back in in a way that's safe and healthy for you they're always going to be around you they're not leaving they need to heal too love them enough to let them go into healing Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Thank you for that release. Wow, that's great. Okay, down into <laughs> down into the sacral chakra. Let's just clear that away. It is sweeping up. I can see them sweeping up, clear and clear and clear, and taking away things that no longer serve you. Building you a platform. You'll be. You will be creating on solid rock. No more, no more creating from that sandy shore that's going to get washed away. You're, you're creating this solid rock to build from. How beautiful. Okay, now the energy is flowing right on down. Down your legs. Oh, that feels really interesting. Down over the knees and down all the way down the lower legs, down into the feet. The ankles, if there's healing, for some reason, I focus some heat on some ankles. So if some of you have weak ankles or sore ankles or sore feet, feels like there's some healing going on there. So just kind of stretch out your legs. Let that energy flow easily. Right over the feet. I feel heat at the base of my feet. Beautiful. You got chakras down there too. Let's clear those out. Because you know what happens when you start to feel those? You'll step on a sandy beach and your feet, you know, it's like you feel a caress coming up from the earth. You're caressing the earth with your bare feet. The earth is giving it back to you. There's this beautiful energy exchange when you put your feet on the bare earth. So keep those chakras open. Let them just, let them be this perfect exchanging place. The earth needs you. The earth needs your energy and the earth returns energy. It's this beautiful exchange, just like breathing. This beautiful exchange going on, ebb and flow. Beautiful. And that energy is coming back up. Back up now. It's gone down into the earth. It's coming back up. It's into your feet and up your legs. It's going through every cell of your body right now. You're just lighting up. The light being that you are is literally lighting up as we're going through this exercise. Visualize yourself as this light being, and it's just watch. Like the darkness, it starts at your feet and it just goes bing, 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 bing. And get all these little bitty lights, I can see it. And they're just coming all the way up your body, all the way down your arms and your legs and your, and right up your spine. Every part of you is lighting up. This beautiful light being that you are, if you could only see the truth of who you are. You are so much more than you've been led to believe. All the way up your spine. I feel tingles at my head right now. It's as if they literally just brought over a crown and laid it on my head. Can you feel a crown in your head right now? And the reminder is, is that you are of royal blood. You are of royal blood. This is your birthright. You came here to receive your birthright and to share it. 
Your birthright is beautiful. It's this crown of love. Visualize yourself as you go through your day, carrying that crown on your head. The kings, the queens, the ones that came here to bring change. Okay, now those little ones, they've had a nice snuggle time on the grandparents' laps or are snuggling with their little animals and they're ready to come back in. They want to be welcomed back into your heart space. Your Holy Spirit, higher selves, we're bringing all of that, all of that beautiful energy back into the body now. So just breathe deeply. easily they ease right back in i saw some of you your that golden light per uh, light being that you are picked up a little child and said come on back with me and carried it inside of you and they they climbed right back gently inside and it's all safe and beautiful there now they love it now that you're all calm and at peace they're feeling so good they're so welcome annie take one more big breath integrate all this new energy you just received going to be a beautiful day for you. If you feel a little tired, if you're, you drink a lot of water, you got a lot of healing going on, you got a lot of energy exchange, you got upgrades, they're saying thank you for allowing this every day. Thank you. It's like shining up your, your light bulb. Your light bulb has just gotten a good shine and you're shining brighter today. And they need you to shine. We all need each other to shine. You're so welcome. So welcome, Linda. Ah, thank you. Thank you guys. Because when I sit down with you and we do this, I receive. So I'm, I'm blessed by you. I think we're about out of time. We're well out of time. <laughs> we ran over this a little bit. That's okay. When spirit comes in, it's going to happen however long it takes. So thank you all so much. Annie, thank you for being a part of that, for pulling that, that animal energy in today. Thank you. you. We each had a part in this. You're all a blessing to me. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> I hope you feel a little lighter. Wiggle those shoulders. I hope it feels a little lighter. I know how hard it is having ki kids in the house, so take time for you today. Annie, bless you. Bless you. Thank you guys. I got to get off. I love you so much. I'll be back. Today is Tuesday, so I'll be back tomorrow morning at 930. Thank you, Scarlett. She's saying thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of you for being tribe members, for joining me here today. I love you so much, and I will see you tomorrow at 930. Please share this out if you feel like it would be helpful. It doesn't matter. Truly, it's nice to be here a lot, or in a live group where I can interact with you. But the healing and the clearing that happens is for anyone at any point that they, they're ready to receive it. So if we start sharing it out, it, it's an opportunity. So Marika, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Please take good care of yourselves today. Be in peace and shine your light. Please shine your light. We're, we're winning this battle. Thank you for joining me in the battle. I love you. I'm wearing a crown. Excellent, Marika. I wear that crown with pride today. Enjoy. Enjoy being a child of the king and queen. I love you. Bye now.